Hello, everybody. We uh, have a very special treat today, just off the cuff. Uh, it turns out that Fraser Anning is in Melbourne, so we've come down to quickly interview him before a press conference. Apparently, I only heard about this about an hour ago, so slightly unprepared, but good opportunity nonetheless. This is Dave, if you haven't met him before. He's on the, the live stream. Don't worry, he's, he's a Melbourne supporter, so we, we, don't, we don't care about him that yeah, much. it's always too. a pleasure to be here, Matty. <laughs> Thanks for being here with us. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. Really yeah, you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your uh, great show again. No worries. So, Dave wants to ask serious questions, but I thought there's been a lot of serious policy discussion, so I thought just to ask you something a little bit informal just to get to know the, the real Fraser Anning. So how would your family describe the kind of guy that Fraser Anning is? Uh, <coughs> that'd be interesting. Um, I guess they're, uh, you know, we're a very tight family, very close knit family. And uh, my two daughters are in America, but um, my wife's over here in Australia with me and uh, they're pretty supportive of what I'm doing. Uh, they didn't expect it to uh, get as big as it did, as quick as it did, but um, so that's what's happened, I guess. So, uh, no, they're, they're supportive from uh, over there and here. Fantastic. And I heard you're a, a bit of a larrikin. So do you follow the football or rugby and, or are you just not a sports ball fan? Oh, no, I like all the football. And, mm. uh, uh, yeah, more rugby league is our game up there in Queensland. We do have rugby union. I don't follow it as much as league, but um, they're all good games. And I even like the AFL. I think mm. that's a great game too. They're very, very... Uh, fit guys in that. Do you have a specific team in the footy or would you like a team? No, Broncos. Oh, in, in the AFL? Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't have any particular team except for the, the Brisbane team, of course. We well, can go for the Hawks if you want. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. <laughs> no worries. Dave, you had a question? Yeah, okay. So this is more of the serious side. So at the moment, you're um, pretty much the spearhead of the nationalist movement. Like you've just been become the figurehead. And so understandably, the fake news media are doing their best to be very critical of you um like you know they've presented you as being at a rally with nazis when in st kilda like their footage showed that people were simply doing bezel faulty impersonations they accused you of <coughs> blaming the victims for the christchurch shooting when your statement clearly blamed the government Im program of mass immigration Absolutely. like they even tried to present you as a draft dodger when in fact you actually joined up in a unit which didn't get deployed during vietnam um so the problem with the media is that they want to attack you, but every time they attack you, it just makes you stronger. Like, do you think they're actually struggling to find a way to cover you? Yeah, they are a bit, uh, <clears throat> but this is what you've got to expect from fake news, from the left-wing media. Uh, we saw in, uh, in America after uh, Donald Trump was exonerated, uh, some of those stations, CNBC, ABC and NBC, dropped 50% in their viewing audience because the people who had been believing them realised eventually that they'd been lied to. Um, if the left-wing media in this country would one day give us an unbiased report and let the Australian people make up their minds, which is what news is supposed to be, journalism is supposed to be about, not forming opinions for people, then I think they'd have a lot more credibility. But unfortunately, I, I can't see that ever happening. They're, they're driving their Marxist agenda and they'll continue to do it. Uh, you spoke about the St Kilda rally. <coughs> that was a deliberate... Um, attempt for them to uh, denigrate me but the rally that I was at were normal decent Australian working people who were upset about being attacked by Sudanese gangs. There, there was another rally at the same place at the same time 150 metres down the road that had nothing to do with the people we were with and of course the left-wing media put me in that rally and that was a deliberate uh, it was just a deliberate deception of the Australian viewing audience so um, uh, th that's exactly what they do, and, and again, that the um, after the uh, New Zealand uh, massacre, you know, they they took my words and uh, tried to blame, uh, said that I was blaming the victims. You know, all I was doing is pointing out clearly that the government's policies is what causes these problems. Uh, now, Mr. Morrison agrees with that uh, to the point where he's funded ASIO and the Australian Federal Police, who, by the way, are doing a great job at diffusing these terrorist attacks before they happen he's funding them for another 570 million taxpayers dollars because he realizes there's a huge problem now if he realizes that why does he keep bringing the same people in uh, how much more money can we keep spending uh, he's told us that there's been an eightfold increase in the people on terror watch in the last five years well if you extrapolate that over the next 10 15 years uh, we're going to run out of police or we're going to run out of money 
Yeah, it's spot on. Yeah, good good questions. I, I, I had one question as well. I'll, I'll try to be serious for a second. <laughs> I noticed in we'll the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dave wanted me to uh, make a video about flamethrower tanks to put on this video. <laughs> if anyone hasn't seen our interview, it's on my, my live channel. But I did have a serious question. Now, I noticed in your head of vote card in Queensland, you're putting the Liberal National Party third. Like, do you really want to preference the Liberal National Party third or... Uh, is that a mistake or what, why would you put them third over, say, um, the Sustainable Australia Party who actually want to cut immigration or some other party like even One Nation? No, that's a good point. Um, our biggest, uh, our job is, you know, to try and keep Australia safe. And the best way to do that is keep Greens and Labor out of Parliament. Uh, you know, definitely we don't want a Green-Labor alliance in there. That's a toxic alliance that's going to destroy Australia, I believe. So... Uh, our strategists go through and uh, we work out the best way to make sure that our votes are for a conservative type party. Even though the Morrison government's not conservative, at least it's better than the Labor Green Alliance. So uh, for him to put me and, and my party, a Christian conservative party, below the, um, the uh, Labor and the Greens was just madness. You know, I mean, we stand for the things that, uh, you know, Australia, I think, needs, and that is... You know, no more immigration from places where these, these people, Muslim immigration, Sudanese, who come in here to destroy us and cost us lots. So, I mean, he decided to do that. That's his decision. But, you know, we're not going to reciprocate uh, at the expense of the Australian people. On that note, then, do you think that the Liberal Party is actually standing in the way of a genuine Conservative Party rising up in Australia? Or do you think it can be reformed and we can influence it? Sorry, on top of that as well, is there a reason you put them third? And why not just put them sixth? Because that way you're still giving them your preferences, but you're also giving more preferences to other parties that might have Australia's interests more at heart. Yeah, good point. Well, it, it, that was the way the strategists worked it. They they believed in that particular case on that. Uh, you know, that was where we should have put them so that we make sure that the Greens and Labor don't get in. Um, and your question, sorry, uh, David? Do you think that the Liberal Party can actually be influenced to become a true Conservative Party again, or do you think it needs to go, basically? Well, you know, it's hard to say. Look, the, the biggest problem with Australian politics is party politics. Um, you know, these people are elected ostensibly to represent their candidates and, and uh, the state as a whole or, or the nation. And when they get into Parliament, they're told exactly what to do whether it's uh, you know, what they, their conscience believes or what they believe is good for their um, constituents. And so that's where party politics is failing. You know, they're, they're not actually, it's not democratic at all. Yeah. You're told what to do. If you don't do that, if you cross the floor, if you vote your conscience on Christian values, for instance, or whatever it happens to be, or what you think that your constituents would want, they'll fire you. They, you d just don't get uh, re-endorsed and they'll put somebody else in there who will follow the party line. Okay, so I'll just have one more serious question and then we'll finish up with something a little bit more lighthearted. Um, I've, I've got a, oh, you have another serious I've got, question? I've, got, I've actually got a difficult one, but yeah, you go. You go. Okay. <laughs> do we have time to do two, three more questions? Yeah, All right. Yeah. So we've noticed, especially in the last week, but it sort of happened over the last three years, these big tech Silicon Valley giants are censoring and oppressing the free speech of ordinary people who just happen to have political opinions that go against the globalist multinational politically correct whatever you want to call it that narrative so what they tend to do on facebook they're now outright deleting people for having wrong think views on twitter they've been doing the same for a long time they call it harmful and offensive whatever they call it mm -hmm. it's just a made-up word in my opinion but even people are like, even com companies like google and youtube so they manipulate their search results to put the authoritative sources which is just all fake news mainstream media to, to the top and recommend things that or people that they dislike more so would you be doing anything to address that if you got the chance to do it or would you be looking to maybe get advice on how to address that because I, I could definitely tell you how to address that myself but just wanted to see your thoughts on on that particular issue because it is so serious given that they control so much of the the current discourse sure um <clears throat> i agree with you wholeheartedly all our a lot of our um party our um candidates in queensland have had their facebook pages shut down not for anything outrageous just because they're a conservative uh, candidate with a conservative party 
Now, uh, Donald Trump has uh, uh, highlighted the exact same thing, and he's uh, very upset about that. So I'm sure Donald will do some things, and I'll take some advice from him if he'd like to give it to me about how we can do it, uh, you know, if we can get enough people in on the cross benches here. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, the, the tricky one, I guess, um, on our blog XYZ, we have different writers with different opinions, and so people send me stuff. I put it up. Um, there's a guy called Adam Pickett who actually wrote a really interesting article. It's basically making the case that you're actually a moderate, like the media are trying to present you as an extremist, but you're actually a moderate because one of your candidates in Queensland, number two on the ticket, I think, in the Senate is an Indian, like Indian uh, by birth. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor. Yeah. Do you see a contradiction between being a nationalist party and having an Indian, or do you, do you see it as complementary? Absolutely complementary. Uh, <coughs> this nation was built... Uh, by people who came from all war all countries in the world, you know the Greeks, the Italians, uh, you know the Indians, the uh, Vietnamese and Filipinos, and all these sort of people have come over here, and they've integrated really well, and they've helped us build a country. So uh, those are the people that are welcome. They don't go on welfare day one, and they don't stay there for the rest of their lives like some of our fake refugees. So they're very welcome. You know the people who aren't, uh, I, I believe, welcome are the people who are coming over here, going on welfare. Uh, and uh, then causing havoc and trying to turn our society into their society. So it's not multiculturalism, it's tribalism or, it, or it's a parallel to society. That's not what we want. We want people to integrate and to, uh, to join in with us and uh, help build the country as all those, those nations, as I just mentioned, did. So, so do you think then that a uh, European ma majority then is still very important in maintaining, like, just like our culture and like our identity as a European country. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 1970, we're 99% European. We're now 70% European. So keeping a, a predominantly European society, it's not wrong to have a European society. Uh, for some reason, uh, it's only the Western countries that need diversity. You don't hear anyone saying that Africa needs diversity or China needs diversity or any of the Asian countries or the Middle Eastern countries. No one wants to give them diversity, but apparently we're, we're supposed to have this diversity, which is all being pushed by the United Nations, this globalist agenda. Um, and, uh, you know, they, look, our party will never surrender our sovereignty. Uh, we'll stand up for uh, for Australia. I don't believe that we need to be dictated to by a foreign, corrupt, globalist organisation like the United Nations. And I'd like to see us out of that that uh, corrupt organisation day one. So in that regards, I think your position in terms of the nationalist movement is quite moderate. So it's quite strange that the, the mainstream media are, are attacking you because there are a lot of people who would strongly disagree with the idea of, of having an Indian as a as a candidate I personally I'm I mean I'm, I'm not all too concerned as long as they are on board with keeping Australia an overwhelmingly white European country then it's okay well I mean obviously you can't just go no go away because yeah. you, you were born over there I mean if they if they are willing to work within our system and maintain that majority like that super majority then that's okay because they're sure. essentially on our side it's just like you said when they flood in from other countries and you got you know rather than one or two families from India or China you get a million people who come in and mm. clog our streets and keep our wages low that and, and they end up dividing our society as well that's so right. Will you say that you're sort of along those lines? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the predominantly European means as we are now. 70%, we don't want to go lower than that. Uh, I, I don't believe most Australians want to. I, I don't believe most Australians want to become a minority in their own country. Uh, what's the point of being here, you know? I mean, what other country uh, lets that happen? No other country that I know of, you know, where they, they start off as one thing and then become a minority in your own country. Uh, I, I believe that we'd like to stay the way we are, which is why people want to come here, by the way. they don't. I, I don't think that the people who come here want to see it changed, except for one group. <coughs> but, you know, you know, Middle Easterners do. But, um, no, I, I'd say that most Australians would like to see us staying as it is. It was uh, the Europeans who built the country uh, and made a great nation out of, uh, out of a pretty hostile... Uh, land mass we've turned it into a into a great nation we can do a lot more we can start watering the inland for an instance and stop these droughts slaughter, you know killing all our um, our animals all the time so uh, that's all doable but you know we've had no nation building uh, projects in this country for 30 years or more 40 years and we need to start doing that again so uh, and you know continue to build this beautiful nation well demographics are destiny did you have another question no, I think we're flame thrower, tanks. <laughs> no, thanks <laughs> i was just gonna ask you how, how has australia sort of changed since you were a kid like in terms of attitudes and 
even the, when you look out the door, I, mean, I know in, since I was a kid, it's changed immensely. So I would imagine it's changed even more for you. So what's the most obvious thing that's different now compared to when you were a kid back in the, uh, I don't know when you were a kid, <laughs> back in the, in, the, in the 70s, we'll say. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's lots changed, obviously, you know. Um, Dad used to go to work and mum would stay at home and look after four or five or six kids uh, and uh, they had a good lifestyle and they'd, they'd uh, buy their own house and pay for it and a nice car and then they'd go to the beach on the weekend. Well now mum and dad are both working, the kids are staying at home if they can afford kids, most of them can only afford two and so their, their lifestyles changed a lot. Um, they, they look over their shoulder a lot now when you walk down the street, especially in Melbourne. Um, and the bollards in the end of the street. So we're not a, it's not a safe country that we used to be, uh, and we, uh, you know, people are upset about that, and with good reason. So uh, I think we need to try and uh, take care of that by uh, limiting the type of people who come in here, and uh, the ones who are committing crimes, the immigrants who commit crimes, send them back to where they came from. The fake refugees, for instance, came over here for refuge, even though they crossed eight or ten countries that could have given them res refuge. We've fought their battle over there, we've conquered ISIS. Uh, it's now time for them to go back home. It's safe again. The Sudanese, the Sudanese problem is, is finished now, so refuge is over. Home, you go and rebuild your own countries. We'll get on with building ours. Fair enough, and I'm not sure if you know this, we'll just finish up with this question, but uh, someone has attempted to egg Scott Morrison today. They were unable to succeed because the egg didn't actually break. <laughs> Do you have uh, any advice for Scott Morrison regarding that or any predictions based on, on this event? Oh, well, the girl should have got um, uh, normal eggs, not hard-boiled eggs. I don't know what she was doing, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't advocate any violence against people just because they have a difference of opinion. So um, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, whether the girl's charged or not. Mm. But, um, you know, as I say, I don't, uh, I don't think it's the right way to go. You're better off talking to people and discussing your uh, problems. The problem in New Zealand with that massacre was that a lunatic didn't agree with somebody else's position, so he took the most drastic measure uh, and uh, committed that horrific crime. So that's not how we should be dealing with uh, people who disagree with us. Yep. Fantastic, Fraser. Thank you very much for joining us for this impromptu interview. Um, sorry about bringing Dave along. We had to. <laughs> we, 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 we had I do, to. I do my best. You know. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> Thank you very much. Best of luck. I'm hoping that you do very well for the sake of yourself and for the Australian people because we need some real change. We need to get these major parties out of power because they are destroying our nation. Well, yeah, thanks, Matt, and thanks, Dave, and thanks for your support. It's, uh, it's been great. Thank no worries. You. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and go and check out Fraser Rainings Party. You can go and check out his Facebook page if you want to, if it's still there, who knows? They might get rid of it anytime these days and we will see you when we are looking right in your eyeballs.